Hey guys, what's up? So today I want to talk to you guys about an AMA that was done over on the Classic WoW subreddit. Uh, there's a lot of really interesting answers in here uh, from the different members of the Classic WoW team, and I thought I'd share that with you today. So some big issues that the Classic community seems to have, and a lot of the questions that were asked, are about population sizes, realms, layers, and just overall the, the rollout of servers on launch. So I think one of the most important things and most uh, sought after answer that a lot of people were asking is about population caps and uh, you know, what are their plans for the launch? Do they have like a backup plan in case, you know, tons and tons of people flood the servers? And basically they answered by saying, yes, they have backup plans. They're ready to launch other servers at, at release if they need to. Uh, they also answered the fact that they're not going to release specific numbers on populations for the realms, obviously, as they say that that will change drastically over time. All right, guys, I just want to get right into the questions now. There's a lot of them, so I want to just go over some of the more interesting questions that I thought stood out and kind of answered some questions that the community has been having for a while. So the first one, which is very simple, the question was, will there be paid services for Classic? answer is we are we aren't considering other services beyond character transfer at this time uh, another one in the same vein i hope that the character services stays limited to server experts for transfers because things like character boosts will break my heart the answer is character boosts are not in keeping with classic we don't want to break any hearts so here's another interesting one what is the stance on people trading gold from classic realms for gold on BFA realms and vice versa? I hope this will not only be an unsupported trade, but actually against rules and be bannable and be a bannable offense. If people can trade gold between the two versions of the game, then they can still effectively buy gold by selling a WoW token on BFA servers and then trading the gold. The answer to this is there is no direct means for characters in BFA to transfer gold to characters in WoW Classic. This would be highly disruptive for Classic as the economies of these two games are very different. Gold exchange between players in WoW is subject to our terms of service. Purchase of gold from third parties could lead to suspension or banning of accounts. Uh, the, qu the answer actually didn't really answer uh, the question to all I think they're mainly saying like someone in trade chat being like hey I have X amount of gold on BFA servers willing to trade for this much on classic and they didn't outright say that that's wrong uh, they do say that gold exchange between players and WoW is subject to our terms of service so I guess if you're interested in a little bit more details of that you'd probably have to kind of dig into their terms of service no, this is one that a lot of people have asked about. So here we go. The question is, how are you going to deal with gold sellers and cheaters? And the answer is WoW Classic has much better means of detection than original WoW. All WoW players are subject to our terms and service. Violation could result in suspension or banning of accounts. Now, I know one of the things that they said early on when they were talking about the core of the game that they're going to be using is since that the, they're not actually on the old you know uh, the old api and the old server setup i guess of uh original wow they actually have much better means of detecting bots and also dealing with gold sellers and and all that kind of stuff so this question kind of puts to rest a little bit of that uh, worry that some people had and uh, I do think that this means that, you know, cracking down on gold sellers and cheaters uh, will be much easier in, in uh, Classic WoW than you do see on like private servers or, you know, back in the day in WoW. Will Mankirk's wife be moved to recreate an authentic vanilla experience? And the answer is no changes. Uh, here's another question. What does success look like for the Classic WoW or look like for classic wow to the development team uh, the answer is success for us is that players enjoy the game we hope that those who played back in the day are overcome with nostalgia great memories and reconnect with old friends 
and we hope that new players get to experience this iconic time in MMO history and experience the world with new friends. What was the feeling in the office when the team suspected, then learned that Classic WoW was an official project? I imagine some people groaned, others excited, or didn't care. What was the general vibe? And the answer is, the team was very, very excited. The biggest challenge we faced with the project was figuring out whether we could pull this off from a technical perspective. But once we, prov we proved that it was possible and we stood up the reference client, there was no looking back. What are the plans for phase two if some realms are horrifically overpopulated at 50K plus players, will layering stay? And the answer is we are, we're absolutely committed. Listen to this. We're absolutely committed to reaching one layer per realm by phase two. This is why we need to have upper bounds on the number of players connected to a realm at one time and queue players past that point. That, of course, is why we're willing to open new servers if necessary and we're even started and we've even started doing that in response to the incredibly positive reception we have we've had during the name reservation period. So that answer obviously shows us that again they've doubled down on it multiple times that they're committed to having layering out by phase 2 which obviously for world PVP is massive and so this is really really good news. Has the reception for classic met or exceeded expectations? Are there far more people coming back from Classic than expected, or were you guys right with the predicted ballpark? And the answer is, we've been blown away by the response to Classic WoW. The passion from the community is exactly what got us working on this in the first place, and we've seen new signs of your passion and excitement every day. We're very excited to make it all a reality for you all next week. On August 12th, the Classic servers in place were buckled nearly to the breaking point under the weight of character creations alone. Many players showed up early only to be randomly lagged out or disconnected, held back sometimes 30 minutes or more, and potentially missing the chance for their reserved names. What steps are being taken to ensure that at launch the same thing doesn't happen on an even greater scale during the initial rush? Are these measures in place to avoid or are there measures in place to avoid punishing those that get randomly disconnected through no fault of their own? So they're basically asking, you know, if you wait in a two hour queue, you get in and you get disconnected five minutes later, uh, do you have to wait in the queue again? And their answer is, we're planning a number of fixes to improve that experience. First, we've already begun, begun opening new realms and we encourage players to switch to them. We've also increased the size of the realm queues so they can hold more people before disconnecting them. And we've improved the error message you get so you'll, knew, you'll know you're being disconnected because the queue is full instead of getting a generic disconnect message. So answered the question kind of, but also a little bit vague in terms of uh, if there's you know protections in place to getting disconnected. Ooh, this one's as, this one is one that actually I'm kind of interested in as well. Uh, the question is, on guard spawns in cities and towns, my impression of it is that on the latest stress test, after I had some time to test, it seems to work like it does on retail. Did guard spawns really work the same way back in vanilla as they do in, now in retail? And the answer is, I'm honestly not sure we've looked at that specific case. Thanks for the detailed description. We'll take a look and we'll be and we'll make sure to get it right. Now this one is important because I know uh, when we were playing on the beta and then also on the subsequent subsequent uh, stress test that there was a lot of issues with way too many guards spawning within cities to making it to the point where uh, you know trying to do a city raid would be almost impossible. So I really hope that they get this right. For the gates of AQ event, are you guys keeping the resources and amount of turn-ins or can we expect you to have a few tricks up your sleeves to prevent stockpiling prior? Personally, I'd prefer the latter since it seems more in the spirit of the event. And the answer is no changes. 
Uh, and then they say, in all seriousness, one of our core pillars is to recreate the original experience as authentically as possible. This will extend to the required resources for the AQ War event. We realize there is nothing we can do to unwind the knowledge gained over the years. What we do have control over is ensuring that World of Warcraft Classic matches as closely as possible to the original 112 data. So this is interesting. This basically means that, uh, you know, most servers that are kind of hardcore and want to progress through AQ quickly, they will have most of the materials needed for the AQ event stockpiled already before the patch uh, even launches. And so the war event will be, you know, completed that much faster. So this one is very interesting and it will actually, uh, you know, help you guys out come classic launch, uh, just knowing what to do, which is the question is, will servers be brought down at some point before release? Or will players be able to sit at the character select waiting for Enter World to activate? So, you know, as a lot of you know, we've uh, we've been able to create our characters. So this is kind of a, a question about that. So the answer is we are likely to perform some kind of realm restarts or maintenance between now and launch. However, in the meeting in the minutes leading up to launch, our plan is that the realms will be up and available and the enter world button will instantly light up when we've launched, which is actually really interesting to me. This means that what's going to happen is you can basically sit there, uh, you know, at your character, at the character creation screen, looking at the character that you've created. And as soon as those realms go up, all you have to do is click enter world. This one's very big because a lot of people have been talking about this and how you can uh, abuse Oni on private servers by basically hearthing out or having people die and leave group right at the end uh, so that they don't get locked out on Oni. And so this is a question, here it goes. Unsure how this worked back in the day, you would only get locked to Oni ID if you were inside the instance when she died. This meant 30 people could hearth out when she was at 0.5% HP and then loot would be only split up between the remaining 10 people. This trick allowed you to clear Oni multiple times per reset. This was apparently possible back in the day. And will this mechanic be present in Classic? Will it be considered an exploit if, if it is? The, the answer is, this is not possible in Classic. All players who were in the instance when Oni is engaged will be locked. So that is, you know, solid evidence that you will not be able to abuse Oni at all. Uh, so this is pretty good news. All right, here's a really interesting question as well. Spell batching seems to be causing problems with AOE abilities, such as people being able to run over hunter traps and it not going off or running through mage blizzard split, excuse me, mage's blizzard spell and not getting hit or slowed by it. And there's many more uh, AOE abilities. Are there any thoughts about lowering the spell batching delay or other way to fix these issues? The answer is, this is actually not related to spell batching. Traps and AOE abilities check for the presence of targets during a heartbeat update. If the target moves through them between two heartbeat updates, they will not notice the target. This is how it worked, or this is how it was in original one. Point twelve. All right, here's another really important one. How are you going to handle world buffs? Are there going to be, are they going to be enabled at the launch of each new forty man raid, or will they be disabled for a certain length of time to make the raid more difficult? And the answer is world buffs are going to function exactly as they did in one twelve, which is to say that they will remain available and will not be restricted restricted when new phases are rolled out. Rallying Cry of the Dragon Slayer will have a cooldown. You will need to wait for the current Oni or Nef head to despawn before being able to regain the buff from a new turn in. Could you specify a little about how you will handle quest hubs like Thorium Point, Silithus, Jinthalor, as well as other later phases quests, which will be available from the beginning of phase one and which will come later. We want to be able to have some exploration and discovery to this, so I can't dig super deep into exact specifics around when individual quest items or rep, rep items will be available. Painting in broad strokes, however, Thorium Point and Jinthalor quests should be available during phase one. 
Most quests in Scenarian Hold will be available during Phase 5 along with the AQ gate opening content. The general methodology was to make quests, recipes, items, and the like available when it made sense to do so and feels relevant to the rest of the available content. Alright guys, that basically wraps up all the very interesting and flavorful questions. Like I said, there were a lot of questions specifically on layering, realms, uh, realm population, and all those different questions that a lot of people have. So if you want to read those specifically, uh, I'll go ahead and leave a link to the, the blue post that compiled all the questions. Uh, but other than that, guys, I hope this was uh, an informative video. I know this answered actually a lot of questions that I personally had. Uh, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this. And that being said, I'll see you tomorrow.